What's going to happen if the Trump tax cuts are, in fact, repealed, as our Hillary Vaughn reported a little while ago? Joining us, Mike Falkender, former Assistant Treasury Secretary, Chief Economist at the America First Policy Institute, teaching school at the University of Maryland, and Scott Hodge, President Emeritus of the Tax Foundation, but he's still very much of the Tax Foundation. So, I begin with you, Scott Hodge. So go ahead, repeal the Trump tax cuts. Just repeal them. We, uh, we just heard some testimony on Capitol Hill. 62%, uh, 62% of Americans would pay higher taxes if you repeal the Trump tax cuts. That's a big number. A couple making, uh, a couple with two kids, $165,000 a year. I'd call that definitely middle class. They pay 2,500 bucks more. A uh, couple earning 200 a year. I don't know, still uh, middle class, upper middle class. Uh, with three kids would pay 7,500 bucks or more. What do you make of that, uh, Scott Hodge? It's a huge tax increase that automatically kicks in on January 1st, 2026, if Congress does nothing. And it's a $4 trillion tax increase uh, that kicks in automatically. So Congress needs to do something quickly. And what I'm afraid of, we're not seeing enough movement on Capitol Hill to take this seriously. And of course, you know, uh, with both uh, Biden and Harris saying that they would repeal much of it, uh, that's quite worrisome, I think, for not only average taxpayers, but entrepreneurs and business, small business owners will be some of the hardest hit taxpayers uh, if those tax cuts are allowed to be repealed. Scott Hodge, uh, the repeal of the Trump tax cuts, which they talk about. Now, the latest is the corporate tax from 21 to 28. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that I believe that, but that's what they're saying. But what about what have they said about the 100% uh, bonus depreciation, which is such an important part of the incentives? for new machinery and new equipment and new business. In other words, she wants to give a $50,000 deduction for new business, brand new business startups, something that most of them don't need. I'm interested in this 100% expensing, which is what everybody needs, but I fear that uh, a Democratic victory would take that out and absolutely decimate capital spending and investment in this country. Uh, Larry, you're absolutely right, and one of the unfortunate aspects of the 2017 tax cuts is that the bonus expensing provision is slowly being mm. phased away, mm -hmm. phased out, and unless we renew it very quickly, uh, businesses can't rely on it in order to reduce the cost of capital investment, improve the tools and, and machinery that their workers need to be more productive. That hits U.S. GDP, U.S. economic growth, right where it counts. And that's the unfortunate aspect of all of this delay and lack of action that uh, taxpayers deserve. You know, stability and predictability in a tax code is incredibly important for business owners to be able to understand what kind of investments they can make and how they're going to be able to pay for them. And unfortunately, right now, there's a great deal of uncertainty that I think is going to have a big impact on long-term economic growth. Mike Falcon, so look at this story, you know. They say 62% would pay higher taxes. I don't know, some of the other studies um, are higher than that. But basically, middle-income people, middle-income and lower-income people, Mike, wouldn't, I mean, don't, don't they get hit the hardest if you repeal that? Because they had the biggest after-tax gains from this. It wasn't the rich that did the best. I mean, I just should put in the last segment, uh, editorially, Remember, I mean, the SALT deduction was capped at $10,000. If it were up to me, you know, that's a blue state high tax thing. If it were up to me, I'd eliminate the SALT deduction. That's just me, just my own opinion. I'd eliminate it all together, to tell you the truth, raise money and have deeper individual tax cuts. But the point is, if you r repeal the Trump tax cuts, who is hurt the most? That's right, Larry. It is going to be the, the middle-income people who are going to be hurt. And it's not just the direct taxes that they're going to pay. I think one of the most important things that was said in that congressional hearing earlier today was that the small businesses will just pass along the increase in the form of higher prices. Mm. Because remember, it's not just that we're taxing people on their labor income. Most small businesses 
file through the individual tax code. And so if you increase the tax rates, what you're, what you're doing is you're burying these small businesses that are already suffering from the massive regulation that the Biden administration is putting in place. On top of that, you're applying a higher tax rate. You're taking away the 199A pass-through deduction that also goes ah, to small right, businesses. Right. And what will they do? They will pass it on to lower and middle income households. The ones that have been crushed most by Biden inflation are now going to get Harris inflation because those are going to get passed along in the form of higher prices on everything we buy. My Faulkner, just quickly, quickly, please. these refundable tax credits, I mean, look, Trump raised the child tax credit from one to 2,000. Uh, she, uh, Ms. Harris wants to take it to 6,000 and wants the earned income tax credit. At what point does this just look like uh, hard to account for? There's so much uh, fraud and abuse in this stuff. But also, this guaranteed annual income. And you know what, Mike, what troubles me? It's a guaranteed annual income that pays you not to work. That's absolutely correct. It is essentially going to incentivize people to drop out of the labor force because there are no work requirements associated with it. And at a time of labor shortages, the idea that we need a couple of million people, which are the estimates, to drop out because of an excessively generous child tax credit is not what our economy needs. Um, Scott Hodge, uh, in general terms, if you repealed the whole thing, what would that cost? Do you remember what the numbers were, the tax foundation numbers, GDP and I think the job losses are very substantial. Yeah, it's, it's close to uh, lowering GDP by about 2%. Um, I, you know, capital spending goes down. Uh, incomes across the board will go down by about 1%. Mm. And the job losses are in the hundreds of thousands. Um, and, you know, that's on par, really, with what Biden-Harris want to do. When we modeled the, the Harris uh, tax plan, uh, we found that it would uh, cost the economy 786,000 jobs. Whoa. What, people don't Whoa. need a handout through the tax code. They, they need a job. And her plan uh, and allowing the tax cuts to expire cost jobs. That's the real uh, crime in not taking action uh, before these tax cuts expire. What would the job loss be under the Harris plan? Job loss 700, what did you say? <laughs> 700, 786,000. That's almost I mean, 800,000 jobs. Like, Don't you think that's a big number? Yeah. Holy cow. I, it's, it's a really I, big number. I got to go back really and look number. at that. I got to look at the Tax Foundation website.